Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for ServiceNow Knowledge 15. Hashtag No15, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Chris Pope, Senior Director, Strategy at ServiceNow. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having us, guys. I think this is my third row, yeah. or right. third year in a row, yeah. I should say. Yeah. So, uh, well, we've been uh, loving all your tweets. You've been prolific on Twitter, so <laughs> thanks for sharing from the keynotes and all the action. So first question, what's going on in the show? You're out, you're out in the ground. Um, seeing everything, um, yeah. rolling out the, the tweets. What, what, what's the big picture? What's happening at the show? So I think, you know, it's really interesting. If I look at my schedule this week, you know, I've had 42 individual customer meetings and I've got seven to go before tomorrow. Um, the, you know, the customer, the buzz, what's going on, what's really interesting, they're going on this maturity journey and we've done the table stakes and, you know, and our messaging has changed from where we were and now it's everything as a service and suddenly they see how easy it is to do all these other things and get wider in a lot of cases. Um, and you know, and you see the Fred keynote, it's the wow factor, right? You know, it's, the, it's kind of the cult following almost. Um, and so many of them now are suddenly realizing that kind of the light bulb moment, right? All these other things that are really common from a service management standpoint, we just didn't think of them that way because we're so comfortable in IT. They realize they've got all these other things they can solve now and realize with the power of our platform clearly, you know, they can go after these things and deliver them really, really quickly. So taking operationalizing everything as a service is a, is a, is a hard thing to kind of get your arms around, but every company has all these services out there. Right. Disparate, monolithic, different software stacks, stove pipes, as Dave says. Um, what is the challenge? Because you guys are evangelizing a new way. You've got great proof points, um, new ar architecture that's kind of a cloud-like but enterprise grade. What are some of the operational things that you see with customers of taking this everything as a service in that journey? What are the, what are the key check boxes yeah. that they need to take care of? <clears throat> so it's really interesting. I'm actually running a workshop here at the moment and uh, when they, the, the guys walk in the room, they don't get anything to log into. We give them a flip chart and a pen. And we say, let's pick a service and let's draw it and understand it. And too often I, I say to customers, you know, if you can't draw it on a wall, then you're going to very difficult to automate it or put it into a product to understand what it is. And um, so we're running it again this afternoon and you suddenly see people get out of their comfort zone and we put them in groups of five and say, yes, you actually have to talk to other people. This isn't just head down and code, <laughs> right? And they're suddenly kind of out of, their, out of their tree a little. But then we kind of walk through it. And the other day uh, when we ran it the first time, this guy was a horse trainer of all things. So we picked it and we did horse training as a service. And we really decomposed it down to some very basic things of what you need to request change, you need help, or you need knowledge. Okay, it's a horse, but so what? I mean, it's, is it really that different from a server in terms of an outcome and what you need and how you want things to happen? Um, you know, and so we walk them through this journey and I think it's us getting them comfortable to ask the challenging questions. The how is the platform, they've got the technology to do it, now it's about what are the problems they want to solve. Okay, you don't work in HR or finance facilities legal, but you shouldn't be going and un be uncomfortable to say, well, how do you get work done? You know, you come to work and do some kind of service every day. Let's write down what you do. If I'm you, or how do I consume your service? And when I do, how are you going to deliver it to me? But we, we often too much think about servers, databases, storage, and all these other things in technology, because we know about those. But we don't necessarily know what HR does, but if you ask them, yeah, we respond to things, we give information. Wouldn't it be nice if you could do that in an automated way? So you're saying initially you get a lot of, what do you mean? Is yeah. that right? Okay, so you spent a lot of time with customers. You said 500 customers you met with this year, 280,000 airline miles. <laughs> um, wow, uh, and you still got the ring in your finger, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so, She's here, uh, so we'll, <laughs> well see what that's happens. That's good that she travels with you. Okay, so, so break down the conversations that you're having with customers. There's got to be a spectrum. You know, some yeah. that are really deal deep into the platform, others that are, you know, just you guys aren't yeah, fully exactly. Yet. So, you know, as I said, most have gone on that initial journey. You know, we, we often start in IT, as we all know, right? And as Frank calls them, our homies, you know? We get those guys good, stabilize the patient, get control of the infrastructure and the environment. And then, you know, we start talking about these other things. And, and many customers suddenly realize 
there's either a platform decision coming up, there's an alternative te technology, or they find pockets in the business who've got money to do things and are starting on a journey, but and now that the IT have a seat at the table, they have visibility into all these other things. And you know, shadow IT is talked about a lot. And suddenly they say, well, hang on. Okay, a platform's a platform, and if we're ruled out, we're ruled out, but what are you actually trying to do? Yeah. Is it supply chain, order to cash, all these other type of things? A lot of those principles are the same in service management. Show us how you work and what you want to do, and at least give us a bat, right, at having a go at building that as an app or a solution. And often, what they don't realize is the core foundational data in an organization of people, assets, locations, mm -hmm. etc. everyone reuses it, but just in a different view. Your persona versus mine, but it drives workflow. Uh, but the way they do it today, it persists in so many yeah. other areas. It's repeated, it gets out of sync, it's poor quality, and the processes break down. So really what I try and do is say, well, if we've got all that in one place in a single platform, let's focus on the process and the workflow, and you can be a lot quicker to market and be enabled with you know, the newer technology. Yeah. So if you think about those 500, and, and the customers and prospects, I presume, right? Yep, but absolutely. Thinking about the customers of that sub-segment of the 500, what percent are sort of actively pursuing service now in the non-IT yep. capacity? Um, I don't know what the exact number is, but I think you know, last, um, last year alone we did many deals where HR only, it was led with a HR solution. Um, you know, RMIT, who were part of the keynote, student onboarding, you know, non-IT, and we actually went in initially to do ITSM, and they were like, look, we're not ready to attack that beast, and we think funding-wise would be better, because it's directly related to revenue of the university, to sort our student onboarding problem out. And in that case, we were up against Salesforce, you know, openly, yeah. and, and we won it because yeah. of the extensibility. And now, with all these students coming on board, they need technology services, suddenly the ITSM deal's coming back, and we're talking about it in all these accounts now with higher ed, where you please kind of the constituents and all the services they consume, because they're the first to complain, yeah. right, on Twitter that the Wi-Fi's down or they can't do something online, and it's very social, so how do we enable the IT guys now to kind of... Yeah, that flips upside down the, the premise initially, IT service management was your beachhead, certainly got a great core there. Correct. I mean, but now you're looking at land and expand on the business side. Yep. You come in and you're backdooring ITSM underneath it because yep. that's what you're saying, right? I yeah, mean, I mean, you know, we've, we've done this many times before, right? We come through the front door, the windows, up the stairwells, down the elevator, you know, <laughs> we're coming, right? And it's just a case of where do we start first? And a lot of the times, you know, we talk a lot about better together, right, as a solution and a story because all of that core information is what people need to work together and use to drive work. This is the new service now, mainly because what you guys have proven is you can solve the workflow Correct. use cases in whatever problems they have right. in a very rapid way. Right? Okay. Is that? Go ahead. Sorry, I'm going to jump in. <laughs> okay, so you've right, solved that there. problem, right? I'm sorry yeah. about that. You've you've solved that problem, but a lot of organizations, if if guys from IT come to me and say, okay, hey, we got this new idea, we're going to solve your workflow problems. So yeah. a lot of organizations say, yeah, right, get out. Um, what has to change from that perception and how fast can that change within an organization? Right. I think what we often do with customers is we'll pick a pocket, right? We don't try and boil the ocean. You got a particular issue in a particular area. Let's prove it and show success and then showcase that, almost roadshow it within the organization. Say, look, these guys were up and running. I had a big insurance customer on uh, stage with me yesterday and they went up running and live from product selection to passing a, a, a compliance audit in four weeks and they suddenly evangelized it, and now their underwriters are coming to them who underwrite all the insurance policies saying, hey, how do we get some of that? Because we're in spreadsheet hell and email land. We've got no controls and no insight into passing an audit. We want a piece of that. So we kind of demonstrate the success, and then it just kind of becomes this organic growth internally. But suddenly, because we, you know, we can go in and sell and evangelize, but when you've got the IT guys doing this, suddenly people want their stuff. Yeah. They're not used to that. They're normally like, we hate you yeah. guys, get out of the way, we'll do something else. Now they're the cool kids, right? So it's like, yeah. well, how do we help them? Yeah. And then how do we grow beyond that? So can I ask my question though? Yeah, please. Okay, so I was getting to is... Um, <laughs> Argument as a service. <laughs> so you, obviously, stand, standing up cloud is a term, right? Standing yes. up is a cloud term. You hear that on Amazon. So that's one of the things you guys are saying. I'm standing up some solutions, rapidly uh, deploying them. So this developer angle is really interesting to me. So you got 1,200 people here for CreatorCon. Yep. Major, because now you have the opportunity to come in through the windows, wherever, but ServiceNow can't be everywhere, but you're a platform. So the developer piece is a real strategic component for the company. Explain what the strategy is there, what the plans are, 
um, because this seems like a great opportunity to empower yeah, I, developers to make some cash and solve problems. Yeah, it's really interesting because, you know, uh, Fred used this term and he's talked about it a lot, you know, enabling regular people. You know, I've not met, certainly not in Vegas have I met a regular person yet. Um, <laughs> or I don't even know what one is necessarily. But it's, you know, if we put all the building blocks in place, how can we then enable them to do new things and, and solve these problems? And CreatorCon's a great example, you know, of these people suddenly have power at their fingertips and we've solved the thing, you know, really all you get from us is a login, right? I mean, <laughs> when you look at it, we've solved everything under the stack like Dan was just talking about. And I think now that we've kind of taken the shackles off and said, go and be innovative, go and be creative, because yeah. it's up. all there. Yeah. Stand you know, up and services. Exactly, because everything really is. We just don't think that way. So it's really, a, a, it's almost a hearts and minds thing. And then the technology is, right, we can do that, we're empowered. Let's go do this. So right? you're, you're to operationalize and grow. The developers are, are a big part of that. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I heard a number recently, something like 15,000 is the target, or what we'd love to have on the platform by the end of the year through the developer portal. Um, and, you know, it's, it's challenge them and inspire them to do this. You know, I ran a hackathon recently in India uh, on a Saturday, and we had 2,000 people show up, you know, register for the event on a weekend. And... Um, the things they built were just incredible, and we did one of those word clouds of all the solutions and product names, and IT wasn't mentioned once in any of the 84 apps that we had built in that day. So it's really interesting that suddenly these guys yeah. are turning up and, and girls and say, wow, we can build apps now, we can build these things a lot further well, beyond. If you, can, you know, if you can commoditize ITSM and make that native, if you will, exactly. in the platform, then there's no talk of IT, right? Yeah. It's, it's solution problem exactly. solving and getting paid. And you could argue IT were lucky or unlucky with ITIL, right? I mean, some love it, some hate it, but no one did that for HR marketing or finance. And so who's going to write that book? Well, guess what? We are. We're going to define that and we're already defining it. And the cool thing is, okay, now I know what that looks like. What's the platform I do it on? What's out there to do it? Clearly, as you see all around you here, that's us. We're doing it and we're building that market space. Um, you know, I'm redefining it as well because it's absolutely So right. when you're sitting down with Beth, Frank, um, Dan, what's the conversation like? Take that hill <laughs> on the developer side. I mean, be what careful now. What's <laughs> the, what, what, I mean, because it's important. It's strategic, right? Obviously, right. and it's it's, tra it's got traction. It's working. Yeah. Um, it's important. It's to your growth. What's uh, the tactical execution you guys have on yeah, this? Yeah, I you know I think if we go into this space and really kind of thought leadership, right, and and tell people where to go and how to do this, right, in a really smart kind of, not so you just ship the product, ship the product, but hey, here's a better way of doing things, right? Everything is a service, and here's the principles, and hey, this process we've got, it might not be perfect, but it might be 80% of what you need, and then you can go and tailor it to what you need to do. We're the only people doing that, right? So it's very exciting, and it's almost, you know, with the Franks and the Beths and the Dave Wrights of the world, how can we go faster? Because the demand is there, we've yeah. got the technology, and with Fred behind it, you know, he's just super excited to build new things all the time. It's how do we enable the field, and more importantly, how do we enable customers to get them on that journey? And suddenly, they're well, there. Well, the keynote that he gave was fantastic. The interfaces are better. The UX is phenomenal. Got the beautification. Right. Uh, <laughs> you have the interfaces <laughs> now. It's just let developers just run run wild. Absolutely, because all the pieces there. And if you look at other cloud platforms, you've got to figure out your database, your presentation layer, your middleware layer. We don't. We solve that. Deal with it. And it's enterprise grade. It's bulletproof from a security standpoint. All those things that people waste a lot of time in project cycles with, yeah. we've done. So now it's around yeah. go out and solve problems. Dan had mentioned that uh, you know um, a lot of early guys are ser service now, and a lot of the employees and the, the engineers and architects are all from the old school, you know, web scale companies. Right. Have to, to build things from scratch, right? So, you know, this is where DevOps term got coined, right? Yeah. Native in the cloud, DC startups born in the cloud. We have a, a cloud. We're born in the cloud with our apps. Um, DevOps is a unique thing, but when I when we would go to the enterprises and Dave and I would talk to them, you're like DevOps. Oh, whoa, that's engineer. We don't. We you're have. Gonna do we have storage admins. <laughs> we have you know right. Cobol developers or yeah. you know. So DevOps seems a little bit risque and more like right. Navy SEALs, high end. Yeah. So, but they still got to do development. Of course. So you guys are kind of in my mind, the DevOps for your enterprise. Yep. But easily, do you do you agree with that premise and, and expand on how you view that world? Is that right? Is it, is it cloud native in, in a right. way? 
Enterpri I think with enterprise grade? It's almost kind of a mixture in a way or a hybrid, you know, not to steal that term or consume it, but you know, people need to be able to do things and ultimately where it's provisioned or delivered as a service, if it's Amazon, if it's us, you know, as in the back end infrastructure, but we're the enabler, we're the broker to all those other things. You know, we have many customers that kind of at the initiation of a request of a project, where's this going to be? Does it have HIPAA, PCI, PII, all those kind of things? It's in our walls, it's good to go and it's secure. If it's a more of a rapid development, fast fail type of stuff, and I'm prototyping, put it in Amazon, put it in you know, Azure or wherever it needs to be. Um, but the moment you, know, you start hitting the governance and compliance stuff, we want control and we, you know, we don't want those risks. But I think suddenly, you, you know, we have this big concept of my. So when I log in, my stuff, my things, my assets, my servers, whatever, I'm now empowered through orchestration to do rapid innovation and releases. And I, you know, the old world of the infrastructure guys getting in the way and the dreaded change advisory board, you know, where I have to go and give up my firstborn to get something done, you know, that's gone because the orchestration's in the background and it's, you know, it's lights out, hands off. It's that kind of automation. And if you look at some of the stats here, almost in a way, you know, our demand this week has been labs, right? And people want instances. And you know, that's the coming in. So we got two guys in the background who provisioned, you know, north of 40,000, I think it is, AWS instances, without any infrastructure people in the way. It's standard repeatable process, we trust people to do it. And you can do it on scale at very high speed. You know, traditionally, you go to a customer and say, how do you provision 10 VMs in a day? And their heads blow up, yeah, like, yeah. oh, well, you know, we need to do all this. You're gonna let developers do what? Yeah. But yeah. the way we've done it with, you know, in, in how we do DevOps almost, you know, it, it's a lot of it's cultural as well. You need to get in that mindset of being an enabler versus kind of a toll gate and finding ways not to let you work. Yeah, you know, yeah. Now it's like the gloves are off, it's open, it's transparent. Well you hit the home run guys, holy grail with the, you know, pun intended, with um, <laughs> uh, the private instances. I right. mean that to me is DevOps sandboxing, yep. people can push notifications, push code in real time, infrastructure as code, now that takes it to the developer market on the other side, so right. that's a huge deal. Um, so what are people doing with those 40,000 instances here? Well that's the lab instances here this week, so they're scripting, they're building apps, they're building services in catalogs, you know. Discovery, Service Watch is a massive thing, right? How do I, now I have services, where are they? What are they connected to? You know, if you look in the banking world, resilience is a big thing that came out of Too Big to Fail and SIFI and things like that. They now have to demonstrate they have this capability. Well, you need the infrastructure and technology to say, you know, if I wanted to fail over tomorrow, could I? And when was the last time I tested it? You know, yeah. if you look at what we do, we pretty much, that's, that's yeah. a standard operating procedure for us. It's not a big event and it's not a, it's not a moment that we have to really plan for, it happens. Well, most know? organizations don't test failover, it's too risky. Exactly, and yeah. it's expensive to have yeah. dormant infrastructure, whereas us, it's part of our DNA and our service, you know, our mesh of what we do. So it's standard, it, it's not a big issue. So I predict you're going to have a lot of traction with developers, so that's why I'm poking at that. I think it's going to be a real enabler and continue the disruption and innovation. So I got to ask you, uh, pretend that we're interested in putting our app into the store. Yep. We're developers. We're really intrigued by the power of ServiceNow's platforms, not just IT service management. I can put it in your store. I can make money. So we're the developers. Take me through the, uh, the use case of onboarding us. What do we do? How do we get involved? Just walk us through that. Yeah, so I think you know, the initial thing is that you know, the doors are wide open. Developer.servicenow.com. You come in, you register. There's training, you know, very, I, can't, I would guess, consumerized, right? It's YouTube videos, it's in a wiki, it's very accessible and available on my terms. I don't need to sign up for a 20 hour class, I don't read a 50 page manual and all this kind of stuff. And then figure out how do I lay down my database and all this stuff. I'm in, I watch a video to something I'm interested in, and away we go. I request an instance on our latest release, and I'm, I'm up and, and running. And that's free. Absolutely, it's free. And the instance is pretty much available in minutes, so I'm suddenly a I can start being you know, a developer and doing things. And then off the back of that, it's like, you know what, I found a niche here. You know, maybe scheduling interviews on the cube, there should be an app for that. <laughs> and if I'm going to be on the cube, why not notify me 15 minutes before, so he's already writing it down, <laughs> right? That, hey Chris, you're up next, come and get mic'd up. There's an app for that, right? It should yeah. be, right? Yeah. And I expect to knowledge 16, by the way. Um, but um, we'll, we'll make Yo a feature too. <laughs> exactly. you know, yo, you're up. Exactly, right? <laughs> and uh, you know, water cleanup services. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the next part of that then is, okay, we've got an idea. Hey, service now, I want to take this to market. So we'll bless it, we'll certify it as if 
we were to build this, this would be based on our best practice. Okay, now the store. I want to make money. I got some traction. Yep. I uh, do I pay to get in? Is it like this? I know we talked yeah, a little so bit about. Yeah, so there's different different entry methods, right? You're essentially a vendor, and a lot of that comes as a result of you know. Um, it, transactions, money, taxes, you know, all those fun things we like to do a in life. A small fee? I mean, it's not... No, it's not expensive. It's pretty inexpensive. But I think then what happens is we get you through the process. You're suddenly exposed to every single one of our customers. And if you're a smaller shop or, you know, a smaller organization, you don't get, you don't open doors in the Global 2000, right? Yeah. That's your pipe dream. Yeah, so you certification is important. You got to be certified. Absolutely. And that's the rubber stamp to say, we're happy with you yep. and you've got credibility. And all of a sudden, you're walking into the GQKs with us, side by side, with yeah. a solution. Yeah. Um, it's hugely powerful for them, and a market potentially they never were able to address, or doors they would unlock. Well, the professional services cost alone to go out and do the belly to belly enterprise right. sales would be brutal. Yeah, so absolutely. So you guys agree. really help developers on that. Yeah, right? and I think we have to grow through our ecosystem. Our partners, you've seen them all here, I think we've got 120 this week. They're massively important to us, and they're SMEs in certain verticals where we're not. So how do we unleash the platform to them? And they go after clinical trials. Okay. You know, we have another one managing airline maintenance, you know, and all these kind of things that really are just service management things. And there's four buckets. I need help, I want a request, I need to change, or I want knowledge. Everything falls into those four buckets of service management principles. Um, and now give me the platform and the power to go and build an app across one of those pillars. Chris, really appreciate taking the time. We're getting the hook here. Um, <laughs> give you the final word. Share with the folks real quickly the vibe of the show. What, what's the vibe? What's it like here for the people who aren't here in the, in the moment? I mean, number one, get here, right? I mean, everyone goes to some kind of show every year, whether it's you know a, 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 an infrastructure show or something else. The, you know, 9,000 happy customers talking to each other. We're just enabling the conversations in a lot of cases. And you know, 90% or north of that of the content is delivered by our customers who've done a lot of the things, and a lot of them are birds of a feather. People have already solved a lot of these problems. And then you walk up to the keynote and you've got Fred. It's like, wow, you know, I've talked to customers today who are like, we've got to get to that. You're way ahead of us, help yeah. us get there. It's fun too. You know, exactly. People it's are bringing, more, not, companies are bringing not one person. Right. You see. Yeah, I was with a customer to, uh, yesterday, sorry, that had 32 people here. Right, wow. which is insane when you think about it. Yeah. But they're jazzed, they're hyped, yeah. they're ready to go. It's driving the business. And the technology's not a, uh, a prohibitor anymore. Mm. It's All right. an enabler. All right, Chris, thanks for coming on. Here. Chris Bob, Senior Director, Strategy, ServiceNow. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE, extracting the signal from the noise, sharing that with you. We'll be right back after this short break.